See, here's the thing. You know what's going on, but you're going to do the thing your way. You know what's taking place, but you're going to do it according to your will. So when you're not conformed to this world and you're transformed by the renewal, how am I going to renew my mind? First of all, i got to take his yoke. What's his yoke? His word. He said to learning him, how am I going to know the mind of Christ and how can I go out quoting, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, if I never took the time to read what was said from Matthew to John. And then from that, I need to understand what he started off from Genesis to Malachi. And in that, I need to find somebody that can give me some understanding of what it was that was said and why he said. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. So my practice is, have I changed what I'm doing? I might have changed the city in which I live in. I changed the house in which I used to live. But I have not changed how I take care of the house that I got. The last house I was in, the landlord put me out because I didn't keep up the floors. I didn't keep the bathrooms up. I let trash lay all over the house. I didn't keep the yard up. Grass grew up all over the place. And I lost my deposit. I let my children just rambunctiously do whatever they wanted to do. And somebody else's because as long as they got their rent, got the lease, I was all right because it really wasn't mine. But you're wondering why God haven't allowed you to buy your own house. You haven't taken care of somebody else's. And you're wondering why they didn't give you a good reference when you got ready to move. They just didn't say nothing at all. They said, well, they pay on time. And the new landlord asked, okay, that's good that I'm going to have my money on time every, every month that come around. But how are they as tenants? Well, they all right. You'll find out. But they pay on time. Now you're in somebody else's property. And before you've been in there a good three months, they're ready to evict you out. Yeah, you paying it and you mad because you think I got rentals right, but are you taking care of the property that belongs to somebody else? Am I making sense? Somebody to loan you their game. Somebody to loan you their shoes. Somebody let you take their jacket home. Somebody allowed you to use their umbrella because they wouldn't ride the bus today. They were riding home with their parent and you had to walk from the bus stop to your house and it was raining. Did you take care of that person's umbrella? Did you take care of that person's jacket? Because they just so happened to have two jackets and they kept the heavier jacket and gave you the light jacket so that you wasn't cold. But did you take care of that property? When you brought it back, it was funky, dirty, and torn. But when they gave it to you, it was clean and unworn nor tore up. Come on, y'all. We want to be in this business of Christianity, but do we really treat people the way that they ought to be treated? Because we don't even know how to treat ourselves. We're still thinking about what happened, and while we're thinking about what happened, we're worried about who going to try to do us some wrong. Have you changed your practices or are you still conformed to the world that you was in? Have you changed your thought process? Mm -hmm. We want people to love us, but do we know how to love people? Mm -hmm. Do we know how to show them love? Mm -hmm. What happened if they do us a wrong? Do we quickly write them off like we wrote everybody else off? If God wrote us off like we write folk off, would nobody be in the world? Does that make it simple enough for us tonight? Mm -hmm. So here now, have I really gotten to the place now? Have, is it that there's something that's causing them to do it? Have I found out why they keep acting that way? What is it that's causing them to act that way? Sit up. You, you, you wasn't sleeping earlier. You, you had a whole lot of energy. Don't get sleeping now. You're going to be just like the priest that decided to go to sleep and fell over and broke his neck while the things were going on in the house of God. We pay attention. Let me go back. We make sacrifices. For the things that we want. Our practices that benefit us. We got all the energy in the world. When, it's, when, when it comes time to doing what I want to do. Watching what I want to watch. Going where I want to go. Doing it in the manner that I want to do it in. Because there's nobody to rule and govern me. Mama gone and she left me at home by myself. Mama told me that I needed to make sure this was done. That was done. And I wait till it getting closer than to get home. Or I done heard them pull up in the yard. And now I'm trying to rush to do the job. Instead of doing what they asked me to do. When they left. Now I got all the time in the world to do what I want to do. Now I got excuses. How many of us make excuses? Why we haven't given God what belonged to him. We haven't really given time to God in prayer. So God allows some things to shake up in our life. He allows some folk to aggravate us in our community. He allowed the bank to now leave us to where we have no access to our finances. 
we in a position, not only does that happen, but in the house, the person that had good credit, credit still good, but they being denied of the things that should be. And the reason is because we ain't doing our part. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Practices. The way we used to conduct business, now that you're in Christ, you do business differently because he said, I, I'm going to require, understood, how is this that I hear this of thee? Give an account of your stewardship. If God in our practices right now, is our Christian stewardship the way that God expected to be? Has it been better than it was last week? Or here it is now, almost 8.30 tonight. At 8.30 this morning, is the way we did things this morning the same way we're doing it tonight? Or have somewhere along the way, we've changed the process of how we now process the information that come in our head so that our practices or our actions display different than it did before. Do I think every time somebody says something, they're telling me a lie. They can be telling me the truth. And I understand if somebody's a habitual liar, it's hard for you to believe when they're telling the truth from believing whether or not they're telling a lie. But that's where discernment come in. You won't know whether or not they're telling the truth because their mannerism, their actions, watch the dilation of the pupil of their eyes. Watch the gestures of the face will tell you when they're lying or telling the truth. Watch their body language and it will tell you. Come on, y'all, talk to me. God already know you said you prayed, but you just said, Lord, have mercy. And that was a wrap. You ain't do nothing else. And you expected God after you said, Lord, have mercy to help you handle this big crisis that you're in. And when it looks like God ain't helping, you get mad. Mm -hmm. So now you do your own thing. Say that again. I can't hear you. Got your head down. Here you said, Lord, have mercy, and, and now you've got to take this test, and you ain't asked God to bring back to your remembrance the information that the teacher said. You, you didn't ask God to help you to remember what it was you went over last night before it was time to take the test. You didn't ask God to open up your understanding because while the teacher was giving this information on the test, you were focused and had your intention on other things. You got in trouble, so now you sat in in-school suspension for three days, but you still got to take the test. Uh-oh. Lord, help me. Did you deposit something in there for God to help you? All right. You can't get nothing out if you ain't put nothing in. If you ain't never take the time to understand the word David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. How can I control my sinful flesh if there is not something in me that can control it? So if I never take the word of God and hide it, in other words, hold on to it, keep it, meditate on it, think about it, and apply it, how can I keep myself from sinning? If I never practice the truth or never stop telling all the lies that I was telling, how can I expect people to believe when I'm telling the truth? The word of God said, Paul said to the church at Ephesus, he said, if you once were a liar, cease from lying and practice the truth. How am I going to do that? Well, first thing I got to do, I got to make up in my mind and decide that no matter what the outcome going to be, I'm going to tell the truth. The next part of practicing the truth is now I got to see the company that I've been hanging around and who it is that I've been dealing with. And if they all they do is tell lies and think that the lies they tell going to keep them because one lie got to cover another lie to cover another lie. And then the truth eventually going to come out And you may lie about the truth when it come out To now benefit yourself Let me put it like this here You know mama told you don't eat the candy that's in the refrigerator And what you did was You got the candy and ate it anyway and you, because the paper wasn't in the garbage can, you went outside and put the gar put the paper in the garbage can outside, or you walked up the street and threw it on the side of the street to get rid of the evidence to prove that you didn't do it. But what you made sure you did was you had a counterpart with you so that you could tell mama that they did it. And you told them how to go about doing it, but what they did to get both of y'all in trouble is they hid the evidence in their room. And even though days have passed by and mama couldn't prove it, now cleaning time come. And when everything is moved, there's the evidence. Now, I don't know how that got there. I ain't had that. I don't know. Well, so my brother did that. My, well, my sister. Well, mama, see what it was when cousin Bobby was by the house. I told Bobby don't do that. But Bobby was in here that. And then you're going to figure out a day that you're going to think that mama going to believe that that's when it happened. But you know it happened long before Bobby got there. Susie ain't never set foot on the ground. Mm -hmm. So I got to change my company. Mm -hmm. 
See, you, everybody can't go where you're going in Christ. Because they're not going to understand why you are not participating in what you what you used to do. Can I bring it to you here? And we're going to bring it home with this here. Because see, when your agenda is about really giving God glory and honor and really showing forth the fact that you're living unto God through Christ and that salvation is really there. See, you used to run to certain games. I, that, 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 if I want to get out of some financial debt right now, I know some folk that I can call. I don't have the number, but I know some folk that got the number of the person that have it and they can front me a few thousand dollars and front me some merchandise for me to get out of debt. Come on, y'all. Talk to me. But because I still have, okay, you saying you got that, be careful what you say that you got because that can get you in a place to be either in the grave or in jail or sitting on death row or running because now you are mishandled the merchandise that you got from somebody else. So now not only are you running from the cops, but you're also running from the dealer that you got the merchandise from because you messed up their product and the money was not the way it was supposed to be. So if you got access to it, you got to be careful because now my watch practice has to change. So now I know I can go here cornerly and get what I need to get ahead. But God said, trust me. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. He, he said, be not wise in thine own eyes, but it's true evil. So now I got to stay away from evil. It's true means to get away. It means to hate. It means not to participate in it. Be not wise in my own eyes. Don't think that I got it all wrapped up. Don't think that I'm smart enough to get myself out of this here. I know how to go about doing it. I ain't been in the game in so many years till it ain't even funny. I can go on and get front of what I needed and get caught as soon as I get it. Because I might get it from a person that used to be the person that got it, but now they became the informant to stop the line of going on so the cycle of repetitive dope dealing can be stopped. Uh-oh. What's the price you're willing to pay because you know you got to do this and you know at the end of the day they say don't worry about paying it back, ladies. Get yourself in the bind and in the position. You done went to your ex. You done went to somebody that you used to deal with and back in the day you knew what it was when it was all said and done and they might not say it the first week or so that it's going on but here a week or so later it's payday time but you don't want to pay what they want you to pay because you thought you made it clear that it wasn't going down. So now if you don't pay it they're going to get it some kind of way and if they don't take it they will take your relationship and mess it up and say what you did and what you promised. Brothers ain't no different. Come on y'all. Can I keep it plain? Because now our practices have to change. That's why he said, the word is hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. He says, it's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. He said, I meditate in it day and night. And because I meditate in it day and night, he said, I'm going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That I'm going to bear my fruit in this season, but when the sun starts beaming so high, it's not going to scorch my leaf. In other words, it's not going to leave me without. Because I got a source that I can tap into because I'm connected to it. If I unplug this amplifier from the socket, it has no more juice. Mm -hmm. It won't produce and project my voice like it's doing now. Mm -hmm. I have a built-in amplifier by God that will project my voice. Mm -hmm. But to keep me from having to use it or mess up my vocal cords, that's the purpose of microphones, right? But suppose I unplugged it from the wall and the electric company decided to come out and they decided to take the meter off the wall. It can be plugged into the wall, but if there's no source of energy coming to it to give it the power that is needed, I'm just connected to nothing, right? So he said, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Why? Because I took his word and I'm studying it. Meditating means to regurgitate. I'm going to get out everything from it that needs to be gotten out. So all the nutrients was in what I was chewing up. That's why we're supposed to chew 32 times. That's the first part of digestion when it enters into our mouth. So that when we begin to swallow down our throat, our esophagus, so that by the time it gets into our stomach, it hits the third phase of digestion. And by the time it gets there, it's should be hard for it to be digested. It should. It takes a normal five day cycle for a complete digestion of one meal that you eat. But we tend to eat three or four times a day. So just imagine all of what's going on in your digestive process. What's going on in your spiritual digestion? What are you really ingesting? Mm -hmm. Oh, practices, y'all. My position is salvation. I'm saved from the penalty of sin. But in my progressive stage, here's what my practices don't line up with my position. Because at the moment I decide not to apply the word of God so I don't sin, you just made me mad and I slapped you upside your head. But the word of God tells me 
that I should not be violent. I'm the leader in the church. He, he said that the pastor, the bishop, shouldn't be a brawler. Uh-oh. A fighter that literally will fight you. I should be about peace because a part of my garment, of my salvation, is the shot you of the preparation of the gospel of peace, which means everywhere I go, I should be promoting peace, bringing peace, or bringing peace in the situation because it's not peaceful. So my mannerism of where I am should now be about causing the situation to be diffused and not elevate or heighten the fuse or not add fuel to the fire. I should be trying to put the fire out. In other words, I should take the nitrogen out the air that causes fire to burn. Uh-oh. It's not the oxygen that makes fire burn. It's the nitrogen in the air that causes fire to burn. So am I now adding more nitrogen or have I taken the nitrogen out and all that is is oxygen so it's suffocating the fire? Come on, y'all. So here in my Christian walk, I done walked into a room and they're and they at odds. They're they fussing and arguing. What, what is my job? I'm just going to sit down and I'm walk out. You just happen to go on a day where everybody's temper is flaring and you decide to walk out. God allowed you to go on a day that you didn't think about going, but at the last moment you swear, I might as well get up and go. And now tempers are flaring. Do you diffuse it or do you walk away from it? You have the opportunity to evangelize to folk on your job, folk at the grocery store, folk on the highway, but you choose to keep your salvation to yourself. Yeah, it's a personal thing, but it's a people thing. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't go to our church, and I don't want to get in there. Yeah, you got to be careful with some things that you say when people are part of other ministries because some folk in those ministries ain't going to look at it as you trying to benefit their folk. They're going to think you're trying to take their folk. Mm -hmm. Practices. Progressively moving in my salvation. Is my progression going forward, or have I become stagnant? Mm -hmm. Sit some water in a glass. Let it sit there for a couple of hours. Matter of fact, after the first five minutes of it sitting in the glass, do you realize bacteria have already started to grow inside that? Do you realize you have microscopic organisms that's already sitting in the water once it come out of the tap of the bottle that you have? And after five minutes of sitting there, they begin to gestate because the room temperature now may be conducive for it to grow. And good thing about the body that God has given us, when we do ingest it and it goes into our stomach, our stomach has the right kind of organisms and it begins to metabolically break it down while the immune system sends in what is needed to break down these microscopic an organism that should make you sick. Do you realize in your spiritual walk because you have heard the word of God in your heart and you apply it to your life when you find yourself in a stagnated situation, you can bring the oxygen to the place that now causes life because where there's no oxygen, there's death. Is there spiritual oxygen in your life or you have taken the oxygen out and you have now become stagnated? Leave it there for three days and you will find a film that grown over the top. Because the oxygen that was in the water from the bottom have now come all the way up to the top and has now escaped. So there's no life in it now. So it's nothing but no good. In our practices, do we add oxygen to the situation spiritually? Some might have been overtaken in the fault. Paul said to the church at Galatia, he said, if a brother be overtaken in the fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Let's not forget about yourself. See, we don't want to restore nobody. Somebody that cheated on their husband, somebody that cheated on their wife, and you saying that's good, you ought to leave them. Have you found a way to help them reconcile? Are you waiting for them to now get out of it because you want her or him? Uh-oh. You... They done messed up in the house of God. They started the ministry and you ready to put them out, but ain't nobody trying to restore to show the Christian walk. Uh-oh. Because you want a pastor. You think your vision is greater than the vision that's there and you get in and you try to change the vision to your vision instead of working the vision that God had made the provision for the vision that's there and asking God to show you what the original vision was to envision you to work the vision that's there so that it can have a life and go forward. What you do is change the agenda to yours and switch the vision to what you think it ought to be instead of finding out what the vision really is. Mm -hmm. Practices, y'all. Position on the job. You think because you got seniority 
Because you done been on the job 30, 40 years, 5, 10 years. Or you figure because you got seniority in this field, this person just came out of training. And they ain't been out of training in a good three weeks. But you've been working in this particular field for the last 30 years, the last 5 years, the last 8 years, the last 10 years. Or you feel because you got a year on them and they just come in. You feel you should be in the position that they're working. You should work the floor that they're working. Uh-oh. Practices, y'all. Did you prove to the folk that you deserve to work the easy floor or have you learned how to deal with the attitudes on the hard floor? See, practice it now. Have you learned the mentality of folk? Do you understand that everybody have a different mentality? Everybody have a different character? Everybody have a different disposition? So now you got to learn. Let me help y'all pastors out, all y'all leaders out there. You, you want to pastor the church, but you ain't asking God, first of all, to show you the people. You're not asking God to give you understanding how to deal with each person because every person don't act the same. All sheep ain't going to be able to have and take the same medicine. Me and you might have the same type of blood pressure medicine. But my doses might be different than yours. We may take it at the same time. But the intervals in which it's supposed to be taken are different. Because the medicine that was given to you and the medicine that was given to me was fitted for my metabolism and my body structure. Uh oh. That's the reason why you don't give everybody your medicine and everybody shouldn't take everybody medicine because it was formulated at the dose that it was because they knew how the person's body could handle it and they knew how their mind would respond to it and the chemicals the brain would get off because of the medicine that came in when it was digested and flowed through the blood system and went back up through the nervous system to the brain, it knew how it would react. Amen. Did that make sense? Yes, sir. Practices. A doctor should be learning every day. A lawyer should be learning every day. The man of God or the woman of God should be in constant prayer, learning more, spending time with God, so that when they get up, they can clearly clarify what it is. If I didn't clarify what you said tonight, and I didn't take it and break it down as small as it could, you would have left out of here wondering, now, what did he say? Because you said there were some things went over your head. So we broke it down to the simplest place that it can go, right? So basically what I did, I did the same thing Jesus did. I gave you a parable that will fit your situation so that you can understand the principle that God had me to give out. Does that make sense to anybody tonight? So progressively, we should be coming to more and more. As a child grow, the first thing, let me say this, and we're going to go out with this here. Fathers, just because the baby born and the baby come in the world and him or her don't really look like you, don't necessarily mean the baby ain't yours. Baby may have been born favoring somebody either in your family or in the mother's family at the first stages of it coming in the world. Mm -hmm. But as the baby begins to develop, it begins to take on the characteristics of who, who traits are dominant more than the other. If the father DNA is dominant more than the mother, then the appearance of the child, as the child begins to stay in the outside of the mother's womb, and as they begin to develop over a period of time, they will take on more of the characteristics of the father's side or the mother's side, depending on whose traits are dominant. If we really supposed to look like Christ, <laughs> now y'all see where it's going? Our practices will really show forth that we're his. Mm -hmm. Does that mean I'm not saved? No. What that means is I'm still doing my will. I'm doing it my way. How I want to do it. The manner in which I want to do it in. Because this best fits me. This is conducive for me. This is comfortable for me. This is familiar to me. God will put you in an uncomfortable situation to cause you to now begin to take on the nature and the character of what he really looks like through his son. Mm -hmm. He got to shape you. Get some clay dough. Well, we used to call it play dough back in the day. Now they call it clay dough. And you can shape it into whatever you want to shape it in, right? Mm -hmm. And then if, you, if you're not uh, artistically you know, inclined... They got all of these different things now that you can put it in these machines and it can look like a, a human being. It can look like a man, a woman. It can look like a dog or a cat. And they're formulated for you, right? Mm -hmm. Then they make it so easy that now you, you, you can put it in, in the machine as just a piece of clay and turn the button on and it's going to spit it out looking like what you wanted because you set a dial for it to come out like that, right? Mm -hmm. 
Then you can take it and smash it down, just like McDonald's used to have the clay toys that you can buy from the store, and you can make them look like french fries. You can make them look like hamburger patties. You can make them look like lettuce and tomato. Y'all remember them little toys back in the early 80s? That they came out with with McDonald's because Plato had it, but you had to crank it at that time. Now it get battery operated, and now that it got so sophisticated, now you can plug it in the wall, mm -hmm. right? right? Same thing with our character and our spiritual walk. Throughout the day, yeah, we're dying daily. We're dying to self. We're dying to self will. We're dying to self practices. And although we're living in the natural, we're living out what God expects us to do in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. Is that right? How do we really talk to folk? And I'm going to get Pastor Ratliff to close us out in prayer. How, how do we really talk to folk? See, we want everybody to talk nice and kind and courteous to us. And we're expecting them to respect the fact that if they got something going on or something bothering them, to not treat us in the manner in which they're feeling. Because that's what we tend to do, all of us, that include myself. Because at that moment, you might be feeling a certain way and you may not really want to be bothered. And your first response is to snap. Whether it is a harsh snap or whether, what? That's a snap. Mm -hmm. Person might, that's okay, don't, don't worry about it. They, 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 they might have really needed you to do something for them, but, but your response to them, just because you were going through now, whether they know you was dealing with something or not, you still got to think about the fact that you don't want to convey your emotions over to them in the wrong manner. Because it's not that you really don't want to be bothered with them. At that moment, what you're dealing with, you just want to stay to yourself. And sometimes what we ought to do that we don't practice doing enough is say, hey, look, give, give me a moment. I, I, hear what you, I hear what you're saying, but, but if you can give me a brief second, let me get my thoughts together. Let me gather myself. Let me, let me get myself together real quick before I give you that answer because I might not give it in the right way because I got a whole lot that I'm thinking about. Do we ever think about that? So we pray tonight that something has been said and done in your hearing. <clears throat> Anybody else got any comments before we close out with prayer? Amen. Pastor Ratliff, if you will, would you close us out in prayer? Father God, we just stand and say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, God. Bringing us closer to you. Out. Realizing, God, that we got to change. We've got to be different. Oh, Father God, thank you. Ask you to strengthen us where we're weak. Ask you to build us up where we're torn down. Ask you to keep your loving arms wrapped around us, God. Lead God and direct us as we go from day to day. Teach us, oh Lord. Keep us in your arm. And we will ever give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen, amen. God bless you tonight. God keep you. So I pray tonight that as you look at this, as you review these lessons that we've taught thus far, that you would begin to apply them to your walk. If we can be of any service to you, by all means, get in contact with one of us on Facebook or give us a call and we'll do everything we can to help you in your Christian walk. Join us Sunday morning for fellowship and worship here at Shepherd, 1226 Coronado Drive, Launchville, Georgia, 343. The hour of 11 o'clock is when we begin to open up and worship. So be with us Sunday if you can. And if not, pray that God will move in a mighty way. Have a great night. We love you and God bless you.